Before heaven and earth were produced, there was something which might be compared to a cloud floating over the sea. It had no place of attachment for its root. Izanagi and Izanami stood together on the floating bridge of heaven and held counsel together. Is there not a country below? They wondered. Thereupon, they thrust down the jeweled spear of heaven and groping about with it, they found the ocean. Drops of brine falling from the point of the spear hardened and became an island. The two deities descended and dwelt in this island, fashioning other islands in like manner, Izanagi and Izanami formed mountains on them. They covered with trees and grasses and watered them abundantly with springs and rivers. Thus, in words rich with the imagery of nature, do the Japanese myths describe the origins of the universe and the creation of the Japanese islands. All that was of meaning and value in ancient Japan was in some way associated with the natural universe. In nature, the Japanese found spiritual exaltation and their religious beliefs were derived from the unit and the perpetual freshness of the world. Nature was whole, it was clean, and it was inherently good. Sin in Japan was seen merely as impurity and evil was interpreted as an interference with natural harmony, a violation of the natural order of things. Nature was permeated with divinity. The ancient Japanese called the spirits guiding their lives kami and sensing their presence everywhere, numbered eight million of them. Kami were the tangible forms of the visible world, as well as the unseen forces that gave life to nature. waterfall was designated a Kun, for it summoned forth a spontaneous awe and instinctive reverence. So also did the mountains, the trees, and all the living creatures of nature. It was to these kami that the Japanese prayed for spiritual and material welfare. From this ethos developed what came to be called Shinto, or the way of the gods. Shaped by the events of history, 
molded by the needs of the society it serves. Shinto has absorbed countless influences from within Japan and from alien cultures. But it has never abandoned its origins and has always kept alive its roots in the reverence for nature. Lofty beyond the mountains, bright in the rising sun, Mount Tachi, a god standing, as tells its sacred name, soars in majesty to heaven through thousandfold white clouds. Crowned with the snow, it stands through summer and winter ever since the days of old. Rugged with its antique rocks through ages numberless. Mysterious, however I look upon it, steep are its peaks and deep its gorges. The snows on Mount Tachi lie unmelted all through summer, thanks to its divinity. Another of the great nature deities is the island of Okinoshima in the Japan Sea lying midway along the major trade route that has linked Japan and Korea since prehistory. The island rises out of the sea with a power and majesty that must have struck awe in the hearts of ancient seafarers sailing past on their perilous crossings to and from the Asian continent. Worshipped as a kami two millennia ago, the island is still held in great reverence today. Priests and pilgrims from the outside world must undergo strict ritual purification before setting foot on Okinoshima's sacred soil. No one lives on Okinoshima except a single priest who tends its tiny shrine and ritual sites. Outcroppings of massive boulders form primitive altars where prayers have been recited and religious ceremonies performed for 2,000 years or more. Around the bases of the great rock altars were deposited offerings to the island deity, left there by pilgrims praying for safe passage on their dangerous ocean voyages. Objects found at Okinoshima include superbly crafted bronze mirrors, some of Chinese origin, some made in Japan as early as the 4th or 5th century. The mirrors were hung as religious talismans around the ritual sites, and their back surfaces are covered with intricate patterns incorporating magical signs and mystical symbolism. Vessels of metal or ceramic and miniature musical instruments were offered for the pleasure and entertainment of the island deity. Treasured objects of gold bear silent testimony to the devotion paid the kami of Okinoshima. Be fortunate and travel safe and sound. If you be pure and free from evils, then shall we meet once more. 
Thus do I lift up my prayers over and over again, as the waves roll a hundredfold, a thousandfold. Rocks seem to have held a compelling power for the superstitious Japanese of prehistoric times. At sites throughout the country, great boulders or unusual groupings of rocks were considered as kami, or as dwellings of the myriad spirits of nature. The notion of sacred space was deeply ingrained in the religious attitudes of the Japanese people long before shrine buildings came to be erected as temporary shelters for a deity. As in many other religious cultures, the need was felt to reserve and set apart certain holy sites as different in quality from their profane surroundings. Only specially purified priests might enter the consecrated enclosure Representing an entire community of worshippers, they served as intermediaries between the spirit world and that of humans, transmitting the prayers of the community and the oracles of the kami. <laughs> The presentation of food has always been an important ritual act in Shinto ceremonies. For in symbolically sharing a meal with the kami, priests and parishioners alike join in a moment of temporary union with the deity. Located in settings imbued with a feeling of divine presence, the tranquility and gentle balance between natural the careful ordering of space and the clear separation between sacred and profane space is as important a principle in the complex design of later shrines as it is in the simplest and most primitive ritual areas. Growing like living trees from the stones of these sacred spaces, the first Japanese shrines were erected to shelter the spirits of the kami. The earliest shrine buildings are thought to have been modeled after simple farmhouses and raised floor granaries. In the agrarian society of prehistoric Japan, the granaries came to symbolize communal unity and in time took on religious significance as well. At the grand shrines of Ise, the ancient prototypes have been preserved, and they offer modern man a living connection with the Japanese of antiquity. Built more than 1,400 years ago, the shrines at Ise remain today the most noble expression of Shinto ideals. Clean in line, simple in proportions, and built of pure natural materials, they possess an aura that has deeply moved Japanese pilgrims over the centuries, and in more recent times has enthralled architects from the world over. Issei is actually a complex of several shrines, all close in age, and similar in layout. The most sacred shrine is dedicated to Amaterasu, deity of the sun, 
the supreme force of creativity and cosmic renewal. Another is consecrated to the god of grain cultivation and agricultural fertility. It is this kami that assures the production of rice, the staff of life throughout Japanese history. The materials of construction are drawn directly from nature, harmonizing perfectly with the form of the shrines. The wood is hinoki, or Japanese cypress, its surface left fresh and unpainted. The roofs are thatch, hardly different in form or construction from farmhouse roofs of a thousand years ago, or from those of the present day. The sacred space of the inner shrines at Ise is enclosed by four fences through which no one may pass but specially purified priests and members of Japan's imperial family. Ise is the imperial shrine. For the Japanese emperors have traditionally traced their lineage back to Amaterasu, the sun deity enshrined there. To their sacred ancestor must be announced all great events of history and affairs of state. Here, a young prince, grandson of the ruling emperor, has journeyed to Issei to proclaim his coming of age. Although the court has always been located elsewhere, emperors throughout Japanese history returned on regular pilgrimages to Issei to offer prayers on behalf of the nation and to seek the counsel of their ancestral gods. It was an emperor of the seventh century who decreed that the Issei shrines must be kept eternally new through a cyclical process of rebuilding. Every 20 years, a new shrine is built on an adjoining site as a precise facsimile of the existing one. When the new shrine is completed, the old buildings are removed to lay open an empty area that will await the next reconstruction 20 years hence. Thus, the newness and the freshness of these sacred buildings have been preserved for more than a thousand years. The construction process uses ancient techniques and follows closely the diagrams and architectural plans carefully preserved in documents that date from the very origins of the shrine. Few nails are used in the construction of the shrines. Instead, the buildings are assembled like fine cabinets. Each section of pre-cut wood is fitted into the next in a process more like joinery than ordinary construction. Families of shrine carpenters have passed from generation to generation not only their skill and fine craftsmanship, but also their dedication to preserving intact the Issei style. Working only with traditional hand tools, the carpenters render the soft aromatic wood as smooth to the touch as silk. At Issei, permanence and renewal express no contradiction. The two words come to mean the same thing. Issei is very old and very permanent. It is also very new. In preserving their ancient form unchanged, in transcending time, the shrines achieve a sublime and ultimate permanence. Morning is the worshipping time. It is the time when man is drawn to his gods. At Issei and at every shrine throughout the land, 
the emergence out of darkness is celebrated in a quiet ritual that is as enduring as Shinto itself. Practical and artless in its regular daily repetition, the ceremony marks the renewal of the day and the awakening of nature. Each morning, a simple meal, the freshest fruits of earth and sea, is prepared with piety and grace. In every grain of rice and every leafy vegetable are bound up the communal sentiments of the people of the land. and profound reverence, this meal is carried into the shrine and offered to the Khan. At Ise dwell the countless deities that have for centuries inspired and protected the Japanese people. shrines of Izumo, located at the other side of Japan from Ise and roughly equal in antiquity, express a very different relationship between man and his gods. Where Ise is unassuming in appearance and human in scale, Izumo towers over the worshipper, overwhelming him with its massive size. Chronicles written in the 8th century refer repeatedly to the shrine as a great heavenly palace, its pillars firmly rooted in the bedrock below, and its crossbeams raised so high as to pierce the clouds of the high fields of heaven. Izumo was clearly designed for a deity of the greatest power. Its colossal roof of cedar bark shingles weighs heavily on the stout pillars and walls. And the stairways rise so steeply that human feet cannot climb them with ease. The Izumo Shrine has been restored and rebuilt several times over the centuries, although not at regular intervals as at Ise. The present buildings date from 1744, and they incorporate numerous changes from the form of the original shrine. The rituals of purification, seasonal prayers and festivals, and the presentation of food to the kami parallel ceremonies carried out at other Shinto shrines throughout Japan. But at Izumo, Priests and worshippers alike are dwarfed in the presence of the mighty Kami.
Buddhism, introduced from the Asian mainland in the 6th century, set in motion a wave of cultural changes that rapidly transformed the society of Japan. Not only did Buddhism offer a radically different way of conceiving man's role in the universe, but it also served as the vehicle for carrying to Japan the splendors of the high civilization of China. The richness and variety of Chinese culture dazzled the Japanese of the time. It was not long before the simple forms of pre-Buddhist Japanese culture were shed in favor of the highly sophisticated arts of China and the continent. Acquiring the skills of craftsmen imported from China and Korea, Japanese carpenters quickly mastered the complex architectural techniques that enabled them to build shrines and palaces in the Chinese style. In color and texture, the ancient preference for plain, unfinished wood was replaced by a tendency to paint shrine buildings a bright vermilion to make them even more splendid as homes for the kami. And the severity of primitive roof forms was abandoned in favor of elaborate designs of gracefully sweeping curves and increased ornamentation. For the first time, Shinto felt a need for tangible symbols of divinity. In response to the highly developed religious imagery of Buddhism, the Shinto kami were given form as recognizable human figures. But a sculptural or painted kami was not to be confused with the spiritual essence of the deity itself and was never worshipped directly. Hidden from view deep within the sanctuary of a shrine, Shinto images were almost never revealed to faithful worshippers. Parishioners drawn to the shrine remained content in their belief that the kami's spirit could not be contained within a single tangible object, but rather extended beyond the image to pervade the entire surrounding area. Unlike Buddhist figures, statues of Shinto deities rarely bear the iconographic attributes that might identify them as objects of religious attention. Kami were most frequently portrayed in the formal court attire of noble gentlemen and ladies. Had they not been placed on the inner altars of shrines, they might well be mistaken for portraits of historical personages. was the material for which Japanese sculptors felt the greatest affinity. In carving Shinto statuary, they treated wood with all the reverence of a people who had always found sanctity in the great trees of nature. The tree continues to live within the sculpted human figure. Compressed in mass and uncomplicated in form and execution, Shinto statues rely for much of their expressive power on a wondrous harmony with the natural grain of wood and the original shape of the tree trunk from which they were carved. In Japan, Shinto and Buddhism have never been considered separate and mutually exclusive religions, but rather as two interpretations of a single reality. Theories arose to unify and equate them, and it became an important function of religious the gain in their Buddhist incarnations along the upper road, while their Shinto counterparts are assembled below.
Similarly, this being portrays the kami of the Kasuga shrine in both their Shinto and their Buddhist forms. The Shinto deities are depicted as familiar human figures of noble character and superior personality. Each is different in dress and facial expression. Floating above each kami is his Buddhist equivalent, seated in meditation upon a lotus throne. Detached in appearance and closely similar in features, the universal Buddhist saints have transcended the world of men. In the depiction of natural landscape, the Japanese artist knows few equals. And Shinto painting invited him to express all his affection for his beautiful land. Kami and shrines are usually placed in settings that represent actual geographical locations. It was the artist's genius to capture in painting the spiritual qualities of specific sites. This painting portrays the various deities associated with the mountains and sacred sites of the Kano region. All about them, the actual landscape of Kumano is rendered with extraordinary accuracy and detail. The great waterfall of Nachi, itself a kami of overwhelming significance in the local cult, is shown much as it would appear to the eyes of a pilgrim visiting the site. Standing at the bottom of the painted waterfall is the Buddhist divinity usually identified with the kami of the Nachi Falls. Like the many streams of the sacred waterfall, the Bodhisattva Kannon dispenses benevolence through its 1,000 arms. Many different versions of this Buddhist divinity represent the kami of the sacred waterfall. While Buddhist mandala paintings serve as idealized diagrams of the entire universe, Shinto mandalas depict actual shrines in actual locations rendering them as recognizable as a map or an aerial photograph. One might well use this 14th century painting of the Kasuga Shrine in Nara to find one's way through the buildings and grounds of the shrine today. In the painting, the buildings are only an inch or two high, but nearly every structure in the entire Kasuga complex is shown in careful detail. imagery is prevalent in the arts of the Kasuga cult. Perhaps this is because wild deer have always roamed freely through the forests and hills where the shrine is located. Or perhaps because the legendary kami who founded Kasuga are said to have ridden mythical deer when they journeyed to Nara from their original homes far to the north.
It is in the assimilation of outside influences that Shinto reveals its durability. In form and outward appearance, the kami and their shrines have shed their original simplicity and taken on new guises. And yet, the essential character of Shinto has remained unchanged, and its strong bonds to local, natural phenomena have endured to the present day. Unlike the many Shinto shrines located in lovely rural settings, the Kitano Tenjin Shrine stands in the midst of the great city of Kyoto. It is dedicated not to a nature deity, but to the spirit of a 9th century court minister known as Tenjin, who was deified as a kami and came to be regarded as a patron of literature and the arts. Tenjin's brilliant career at court was cut short by political intrigues, unjust accusations against him, banishment, and a tragic death in exile, far from his beloved city of Kyoto. Following his death, Tenjin's angry spirit returned to Kyoto, bringing vengeance to his evil tormentors. Pestilence and calamities ravaged the entire city until the spirit was appeased and the Kitano Shrine dedicated to him. Surrounded by the bustling city of Kyoto, Kitano is representative of an urban shrine in a society that has become highly industrialized. It is the center of many community activities and is the site of colorful festivals and bazaars. Just as rural shrines strengthened the sense of community for farm villages, the Kitano Shrine is an integral part of city life. On festival days, great crowds are drawn to the shrine from all over the city. The first act of a devout visitor upon entering the shrine is to rinse his hands and mouth in a symbolic gesture of purification. Then, approaching the main shrine building, he summons the attention of the Kami. Laymen rarely enter the shrine. Instead, they stand outside for a few moments of silent prayer or meditation. Worshippers come to the shrine for a variety of purposes. Some wish to announce a birth or a wedding. Others come seeking guidance in managing their businesses or in attending to their everyday affairs. Young students are drawn to the shrine to ask the kami's aid in their studies or in their school entrance examinations. But most come with simple prayers for good health and prosperity. If history and the arts reveal Shinto's genius for assimilation, then rites of renewal represent its ability to preserve the past. Through the centuries, Shinto has survived, renewing itself like the seasons of every passing year. Since the Japanese first began to pray to the kami, Shinto has been closely linked to the rice cycle.
It was to the deities of the fields, of water, of sun and rain, that the land owed its fertility. And it was upon the benevolence of the kami that the general well-being depended. At every point in the year-long agricultural cycle, prayers and offerings are dedicated to local kami and thanksgiving rites held to invoke their continued favor and goodwill. Rebirth of the kami, tool power, lie at the heart of most Shinto festivals. The festivals are happy affairs in which the relationship between farm community and kami is symbolically renewed fields and villages. Within the shrines, thanksgiving festivals are solemn occasions. The Shinto priest summons the kami to descend into an object that symbolizes its divine presence and to endow it with spiritual pot for yet another year. Thus has Shinto survived. With the passing of the seasons each year, with the rising of the sun each day, is the timeless relationship of nature, gods, and men eternally renewed.